is actually me during the year then, not the singer of the half. You are listening to the Champagne Rugby Podcast with me. I'm Tony Lyle and you are... Sam Smith! And that's uh, all we have today. There's thank you so much, person, But thank you for listening, you beautiful bastards out there. Uh, it's and the ugly bastards. To talk. Yeah, the uggos especially. You are, Shout out to my uggos. Yeah, I love a good uggo. I see them and I go, ooh. Yeah, nice. Look at the face on you. Hey, you know what makes people ugly? Playing rugby union. Oh my gosh, some of those bastards are ugly as if. Yeah, and that is what we'll be talking about today. Not ugly uh, rugby players, but rugby union. I actually saw a video of old Dan Carter online. It was an old highlights package. How and did it really wait, reminded, we were talking about uggos? He's a well, this glorious. Is where uh, if you if you allow me to man. finish this thought, uh, I'll fill you in. What happened was when he first started playing, he was particularly beautiful, like outrageously so. St- and oh. then I and then I it cut to modern day, and comparatively, he is a gargoyle. <laughs> his face is smashed, his nose is bent. He's all just weathered and old. He has come a long way from being the golden boy of rugby union. How dare you? He is still a hottie. He's still got it. He's a perfect ten. Pardon that ugh, joke. Ugh, Didn't even mean that for ugh. for that to happen. Well, Dan I think Carter, he- on behalf of this podcast, I'd like to apologize for the words that Tony Lyle just said. He is a monster, and I will see to him that he is destroyed. Well, I think Dan Carter would agree with me. I'm not saying he's an ugly. I'm just saying he's he was hotter when he was younger. You, he was hotter when he was a child. All right, move go. Well, <laughs> now we can get away with that. Let's walk walk back over the Super Rugby activity from the weekend. We'll do a quick roundup, and then we'll look forward to round 11, but dwelling on round 10 for a moment, if we will. And it was a... Hell of a round, it has to be said, Sam. It was a rubbish round. I hated it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm well, really I sad about it. Didn't much care for it either. <laughs> we'll start on Friday night. The Hurricanes. 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 <laughs> hurricanes. They beat the Brumbies in a game where a lot of people thought they might actually lose. I was one of them. I think I picked the Brumbies. I found out of the week that um, the Brumbies have the second highest winning record. Out of any team in, what, the, in Super in Rugby, Super rugby in the which I guess is because they're often up against the other Australian teams, and they have like statistically been the best Australian team over the twenty-five years. But who's man. The, who's the number one team? <laughs> <laughs> it's my boys, the lovely Crusaders. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Mm. But they obviously Hurricanes won 32-27. Yeah, good and on them. Good on the Hurricanes. They're playing great this season, and well done to them. I think they're, the moment of the game for me was. At the 80th minute, Brumby's got a penalty and they took a penalty shot at goal to cheek, grab a cheeky bonus point. Yeah. And I love that sort of carry on That's from a smart team. A real forward admit, planning. A mid of defeat will give a get a bonus point. And I would love for it to come back and bite the Hurricanes in the ass. Like if it yeah. came back to those two vying for a spot on the ladder and this one bonus point that the Hurricanes let them get in the last minute was the thing that set them off the edge. I think they'll be very humorous. Yeah, that's great. I love it when um, when that, when that when points differential actually matters, which is quite rare, I think. Well, it really mattered to you in Super Rugby Trans-Tasman a few years ago when the Crusaders didn't even make the final because they had a bad points differential. And that mm. was the funniest thing that's maybe ever happened in <laughs> rugby. <laughs> The undefeated yeah. Crusaders yeah, not rubbish. going through to the it next round. It was so rubbish. And then in that final game, I think we were playing the Rebels and we beat them like 54-13 or something like that. And they're like, nah, you're like you're like six points short. You're like, six God points short. I was celebrating because, I mean, the Landers went through. Oh, yeah. um, and I guess we can almost park the Caracanes game there because the most disappointing thing for me was they reports coming through out of Sky Stadium down in Wellington that they no longer play the Hurricanes. Hurricane song at the Hurricanes game. What? Games. But you just sang it on this podcast. I know, and I sang it with Vim and Vigor, you'll you agree. Did. But yeah, they don't play it anymore. They just play, what? I don't know, Dua Lipa. Oh, God. Dua damn Lipa it. and That's got Billie nothing Irish. to do with the weather. Certainly doesn't. <laughs> Took me a second, didn't realize we were talking about that. <laughs> ah, Hurricane, that famous <laughs> weather event. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, so that's bad. Obviously, if I was a Hurricanes fan, I'd be all juiced up to yell, Hurricanes, 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 yeah. Hurricanes. And they're not playing it. What am I supposed to do it myself? Do you know, I, I reckon my favourite version of that is Canterbury. Because you, they make Brie a word. Like, like it's Canterbury. Yeah. But it's not. You just say Canterbury. The other great option as well is the Targo. And they just emit the O at the start. Yeah, that's a great one. I just love that. Just starting with a T. I love all the songs that teams have. I love the uh, um, the, <laughs> the Otago Highlanders song. It's so funny. 
Like, Otago Highlanders. I know that's going back like 20 years now. That's our name, Otago. This is my favorite line coming up. Otago Highlanders, winning is our aim. No shit, that's what sport is. Yeah, but they needed words that rhyme with game, name, and Welcome aim. Welcome to the house of pain. Oh, it was great. Yeah, Just welcome great, to the House of Pain. Great banger and then of a they song. Got rid of Otago off the front of Highlanders, got rid of the House of Pain, and the whole song didn't make any sense anymore, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, unfortunately for them. But speaking of the Highlanders, we can move on to Friday night where the Highlanders uh, went to Sydney to play the Waratahs. So close. Yeah, it was <laughs> so devastating to watch. <laughs> I stayed up so late yeah. watching that game. And in the last minute and a half, the Waratahs. Got to try. I thought we had it. I was like, we're yeah. going to win this. And yeah. we were the underdogs. I definitely thought we had that one. Yeah. Let it slip. And God, it was rubbish. <laughs> the My main takeaway is that the Waratahs are an awful team. We, we have talked about this on the podcast before. They are maybe the worst team. and But they do this, this horrible thing where they become good just when it really sticks it to us guys. Yeah. That's what the Waratahs do. They're a bunch of assholes. I hate them. End of sentence. End of sentence. <laughs> I didn't. You sort of. <laughs> it sounded like you were loading up to well, do I more was. words. I was about to really start digging into Israel Folau, oh. but that, I feel like that's treaded. That's treaded ground. We don't need to do that. Everyone yeah. knows he's an absolute dick bag. Yeah, we've probably um that, that road's been hoed. I'd Come say. Come fight me, Israel Folau. I'll destroy you. That would be a the a crime. Watching Israel fall out. <laughs> fight, a, fight a blind man with MS while he's really egging him on. <laughs> Let's make it happen in the next fight for life. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you think one punch, if he punched you once in the head, oh, you would become deceased? Not, uh, not like even the thought of that, I would, I would crumple and fall apart. He'd walk into the room and his aura would destroy me. Yeah, that's true. Um, he he's is a piece a, of shit. I hate he, him. he is a big man. Uh, well, that game, the Highlanders game, it was in the end, it was a one-point victory. And yeah, sorry, man. Uh, sorry, dear. Bye. Just so gutting. Because the Highlanders, I'll say this, we're not a great side at the moment. We have no, a lot of injuries. We have uh, not a stack squad by anyone, any stretch of it. Who's your number eight? I can't remember his name for a second. Hugh Renton. Hugh Renton. He's having a stellar season. He's having a great season. There's a few of the boys out there playing their hearts out. Yeah. There's only so much you can do uh, when you're up against it like that. And yeah. that... The Waratah side is a pretty decent side. They're still just awful. Woeful play. They, They're bad people. Decent defense, but oh, I hated every moment of it. And I can't talk about it for any longer. I just remember the 2014 final where they, they did the same thing for, against the Crusaders just the last minute. Nipped it from us. Oh, I bloody hate them, the Waratahs. Yeah, Dicks. it's good to see you got over that one in 2014. I really live in the past, eh? Uh, and then we'll take it to Super Saturday, where there was four games in a row. And Before we get into that, I just want to say, great seeing many games in a row. It's fantastic. Those four in a row, love it. Yeah, I imagine there are people parked up here in the Export Beer Garden studio where we're broadcasting from uh, out of, which I probably should have said at the start of the podcast, to be honest, but um, <laughs> would have been just sat here for hours and hours and hours on end, just reaming themselves with rugby union. There are perfect butt cheek marks um, molded into these seats that we're sitting on right now. I actually sat on that earlier. That's this one, you on? That's yeah, yours. Yeah, that's my butt. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you I got just... a nice wee butt going on there, buddy. Yeah, it goes without saying, really. Yeah, nice. The Good first idea. game on that Super Saturday was in Fiji. The Fijian drew against the Blues. The Blues comfortably winning, really. The feed I watched it on looked like someone had filmed it on their home, like their phone. It was <laughs> not a good feed. I was watching it in a boat club. Yeah. And it was oh. just, I don't know if it was the TV in the boat club or if the, the signal from Suva wasn't quite up to snuff. What, but What are you doing hanging out in a boat club? I was at a fishing competition. What? How'd that go? It went poorly, I didn't catch anything. Ah. Yeah, a real waste of a Saturday. Yeah, nice. But a good time with the kids, so I enjoyed myself. Had a good time <laughs> oh, there. Good on you. It was all, uh, had a good time, had a piece of fish and chips afterwards. But nice. Yeah, there was a lot of... Presumably just, someone else's fish that they caught. They, yeah, someone must have caught it, yeah. They gave it to you instead. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, fish and chip shop yeah, at the nice. boat club. Very good. Lovely little day, actually, out. But yeah, I watched the game in the boat club with a $7 spates afterwards, and it was uh, just a real time. Is that a lot? Life. I don't no, know. That's, that's, that's basically free. Okay, cool. I am, um, as a non drinker, um, apart from uh, wonderful export gold, uh, did that sound like I've actually had that before? I've never had it. It sort of did sound like yeah, it. Yeah, I was trying to. It sounded a little it. bit like you've had a, a beautiful export <laughs> ultra. <laughs> the lovely, delicious 
um, bathe in it, export ultra. Um, I'm used to just paying like $4.50 for a, for a glass of Coke, um, which is more than the, the entire bottle. Well, while we're speaking of export ultra, there's, have you heard that the other AC boys are off to Paris, the export ultra beer garden tour to Paris, uh, and they're giving some of the listeners a chance to go over there, what? win a trip with the ACC and visit the best beer gardens outside of New Zealand. Can we go with them? Uh, I, I asked and they said definitely not. Oh. <laughs> uh, and it just so happens that the Expo Ultra Beer Garden Tour will be on at the same time as a certain tournament in France in October. What? I know, the timing uh, is a line, oh but according to this thing, I mean, there's no confirmation of exactly what it is, which means that you know they're doing it on the dirty, which yeah. I love to hear. <laughs> G Lane's going, Matt Heath, Manai Stewart. It's getting the draw text Paris to 3236. Follow the link to register and you're in there, Joy. You can go over there to Paris with the boys, all thanks to Export Ultra. Try it. 99% carb-free refreshment. That's the Fantastic. Life. I know. The, um, I'm pretty um, dark. I didn't get invited for that one, by the way. <laughs> Let's go. Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll go over. We'll just, we'll just make it happen. Can we do that? I'm looking at the producer. He's saying definitely not. <laughs> Damn it. Unfortunately, no. One thing I loved about the the Blues um, Fiji game, the Blues Drua game, is that uh, the Blues the whole time looked like they were just chilling out in a sauna. Yeah. They were sweating hard out from like minute one. I was thinking about it from the Blues perspective. I wonder if it's the dream training schedule coming into the business cl- end of, business class business end of the season. Like you know when you you want to perform well, let's say you're a marathon runner, you go and train at yeah. altitude. Yeah. So these guys have gone and basically played a game of rugby in a sauna to yeah. sweat it all out. They, they they kind of did look like they were throwing some practice training moves around near the end of the game. They were obviously very sweaty, but they knew that they had the game in the bag. And I reckon they were just throwing some training run moves out there in the hot just to uh, really practice for the end of the season. Isn't that the opposite of what you want? It's going to get colder throughout the year. So you want to be playing in like icy conditions. But right? they will be fitter because they've been training in con- in harder conditions. All it's right. Like so it's, if, it's just the difference of conditions that's making it. All right. Well, it's I like, you that. know, Rocky, when Rocky Balboa went for the run, he wore in Philadelphia, he yeah. wore tri- like a, a gray hoodie yeah. and gray track pants. He was sweating everywhere because he's, he's training. Yeah, he's, right. He's trying I to s- sweat it out. He's not, he's not, he doesn't fight in a gray hoodie and track pants. I saw, I saw a great, um, someone a- analyzed that, those, all the landmarks and stuff that he passes, and it turns out he ran like six marathons. <laughs> 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 no wonder he was well, no, stoked when he got to the top of those steps. No wonder he was very sweaty. <laughs> very sweaty indeed. But a good one by the Blues. And they're looking dangerous, the old Blues. I almost think they're the team that everyone's kind of forgotten about. I think they were the Hurricanes. No, the Hurricanes are shit. <laughs> The Hurricanes ain't winning nothing, mate. They, um, they are truly woeful. So though. next week, let's see Tony Lyle fight the Hurricanes in the fight for life. I'll while fight, I take down Israel Folau. I'll fight Captain Hurricane himself <gasps> with what? a big head. I'll kick his big head right he off. He is a war veteran. He's done some things. He's committed heinous war crimes. <laughs> we know what you've done, Captain Hurricane. <laughs> Uh, the next game, Moana Pacifica versus the Rebels, and I was lucky oh. enough to be on the ACC commentary for this game uh, on Sky Sport Channel 9, and what a game it ended up being. It mm. was kind of almost blowing out halfway through the game. I thought to myself, oh, the second half's going to be a true punish in the commentary box here if uh, the Rebels blow this out. But Moana Pacifica came back, they fought tooth and nail, yeah. and got it so close by the end. Um, the uh, TAB good punt on that, particular game was for a draw paying $21. Incredible. In the last moment, Moana Pacifica scored a try to bring it within five points after trailing tremendously during Mm. the game. So if they had scored in the last play of the game and missed the conversion, that account would have been up $2,000. One of you good listeners out there would have had the chance to win 2K. But unfortunately, in the last play of the game, the ball was dropped. Monte Ioani picked it up, cantered over for a try out wide, and that left us with a win 33-43 to to the Rebels. Kind of an unremarkable score in the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel I feel sad for Moana Pacific. They're getting better and better. They're great. They deserve to have a good win, against, especially against a rubbish team like the Rebels. Yeah, they sort of do. I would have loved to have seen it, and so would... um the thousands of blue seats at Mount Smart Stadium. <laughs> it's a problem when you do a solid colorway for seats yeah. is that when there's no one sitting in them, it becomes really obvious. I yeah. think 
Dunedin did it right. Dunedin does it great. They did the sprinkle of different colours in the seats, so it looks like there's hundreds of people there, and then you focus right. on them. And go, oh, there's actually no one in those seats at all. They should draw a picture of someone's face on every seat. They should. They should draw a picture of people's legs. That seems like a good idea for some way you could like, you know, when they they do they did that during COVID, didn't they? They got. They got cardboard cutouts of people. You could put them in the stand. Yeah, but that was a bit grim. I always felt there was like people when you look at them, you're like, half of them are probably dead right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you do that as well as having live people there. So you could, I guess, pay money to sit on someone's face <laughs> while you watch a rugby game. Well, that sounds like a good <laughs> idea to me to sit on someone's face at the footy. <laughs> hey, speaking of some, sitting on someone's face at the footy, Sam, uh, the highlight of the rugby weekend, oh the God. big game that everyone is talking about, in Hamilton, FML Stadium hosted the Crusaders and the Chiefs well and truly sat on their face. See, that did not happen. This wasn't a, everyone's saying that this is such a big win, but it wasn't. For that first 20 minutes, D Mac was getting destroyed. Like he was getting charged down all over the shot. He was having a shocker of a game. He brought it back later, don't get me wrong. But everyone's like, D Mac, why are you so fantastic? And later on, yeah, but people forget that he did not start out well. He got charged down. Everything. Well, I think people mainly remember the bits where he tore your defence to pieces single-handedly. They him and did not. Him and Scooter Stevenson out on the wing having an absolute field they day. They did not. They got two. It was a very close game until the end, and then they got that late try as well. Yeah, it was. I felt watching it, I was waiting for the Crusaders to come back. Yeah. Um, but they didn't have And you know what it re- reminded me of, Sam? It reminded me of watching the All Blacks in the last couple of years where they've tried to do what they've always done and it just hasn't been enough. When mm. you've been, And this is talking about the Crusaders. They were doing the stuff they always do, but it just wasn't working. And I don't think they've adapted. I don't think that they've changed enough. Whoa. I think that they're too reliant on Richie to pull something out at every moment. I don't think that the midfield was particularly strong. Yeah, you heard wow. it. Wow. And that Braden Neal play well, I will say that much. Uh, but I think all around the park, they were just looking a, a shade off their best. See, this is what I think is going on with the Crusaders. Um, they're the perfect team. Don't. Well, what there's some incisive, <laughs> incisive uh, thoughts there from I'm just Sam. really looking forward to uh, the final at FML Stadium in Hamilton, uh, a rematch of the third time the Chiefs and the Crusaders will play together. When the bloody Crusaders come on in, they destroy them 63 0. You heard it here first. Crusaders take out their seventh title in a row, and I'm so happy. And please let that happen, otherwise, I will cry. The Crusaders will be lucky to be there, to be honest. Currently sitting fifth on the points uh, ladder. They're behind the Blues, the Hurricanes, and the Brumbies. Mate, but do you know who we've got left to play? The Force, or the Blues, and the Hurricanes. Okay, well, and, and more Moana compelling. Pacifica. Yeah, so all teams that you could potentially lose to. <laughs> For the first time, the Crusaders oh God, could not Mo- make the eight. I really want Moana Pacifica. I don't think that's true. Uh, we've come, <laughs> we've come tenth um, a couple of times, and we famously lost the very first season. We came absolutely dead last. The um, but imagine if the Moana Pacifica game is the game that the Crusaders lose that the Moana get up for. I'd love to see it. That would break my heart, my yeah. stone cold, one eyed heart. And bloop bloop bloop. There's oh, an gosh. alert coming through. On the text line, which everyone saw after the game, D-Mac actually signing on for two more years. That's great. That's Dude great. The Chiefs, he's back. He's had his little sabbatical. He's farted around overseas. He's earned a absolute pocket full of yen, I have to imagine. And he's back for two more years at the uh, Chiefs, which is a funny amount of time, two years. He's like, I'm not staying for the World Cup. I, yeah, that's a good point. I feel like he's got, like, he'll be like, I'll do two years. And if I'm still doing all right, then I'll do two more. But if not, I will cruise off. What's he's 29 round, right? Eh? So if he, so that's oh, that's 30, 31. Then we get another two years. He's only 33. A young whippersnapper. Yeah, he'll be a, the prime like of his life for a being great number deal. 10. And he can be like two more years. And if he's not really, go, he'll just push off and go and get more yen. Go and, and I guess a billion yen. I don't know how yen works, yeah. but I think it's one of those ones that you get heaps of it. A billion feel real rich. A billion sounds like a lot, but I was, I'm glad to see him back, especially the form he's in. It's outrageous. Yeah. He cut Play the great. Crusaders, who are famously one of the best defensive teams in the comp, to ribbons. They look like a bunch of idiots he out there. Absolutely did not. Yeah, well, there's a lot of lot of room down that left. Do like it though. I do. I do. I do very very much like D Mac. Uh, and the last game of that weekend was the Reds versus the Force, which, uh, truth be told... Who gives a shit? Yeah, I didn't stay up for that one. Uh, but it's good to see the Reds on a bit of form as well. The Force, 
truly woeful stuff there, losing to the Reds, who haven't been playing well either. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately for the Force, uh, another bad season for them. And I don't think it's going to get any easier for them this week because we'll move on. Uh, we'll take a quick break and then we'll move on to round 11. And we're back and we're heading down to Dunedin for the first game of round 11. And this is the big one, if you ask me. The Highlanders <laughs> versus the Chiefs. And it's so big, in fact, that I think this is what we should use uh, this week's TAB Good Pun song. TAB Good Pun. Good Pun. Good Pun. Good Pun. Yeah, again, I have to feel like I just said that. But it's nice to have that audio <laughs> as per. And the Highlanders play the Chiefs 705 in Dunedin. And for this one, Sam, I think the Highlanders are going to win the game. I've been saying oh, it wow, all week. Okay. I think the Chiefs, they're vulnerable. Their big belly is they're, open. They're injured by playing the best team in the competition, my boys, the Crusaders. Yeah. And now you are there to fly in like a vulture and eat the scraps of their loins. It's true. Their big, disgusting bellies are open to be cut open by a team like the Highlanders. And this this week's TB Good Pun is the Highlanders to score the first try. Oh, you're not going for them to win the whole game? You're just going to say that they can score the first try? Well, no, it pays the same as a 13-plus win. So when I looked at it, $4 Smart. for a 13-plus win, $13 for a uh, first try. I think the Highlanders will win, but I don't think it'll be by 13-plus. I think it'll be 12 and under, and that's not paying enough. So Highlanders to score for the first try. Paying four dollars, we'll put a hundred bones on it. A beautiful four hundred dollars is it. coming our way. Sounds and like a smart move, Tony Lyle, for the gonna, lovely listeners at home. I'm not going to put money on this, but I think it's going to be Aaron Smith off the base of a ruck. <gasps> wow! Yeah, I know, and he's unselfish. He he's not like your TJ Perinara types, who is also unselfish in life. But <laughs> in rugby, he scored like 58 tries because yeah. he Aaron just passed. He has no white line fever in him at all yeah. and he still has scored about nearly 30 tries in Super Rugby yeah. and even more internationally but I think it's going to be him this week maybe an inside support line actually maybe Ooh, it won't okay. be off the base of a ruck maybe a beautiful support line of a guy like Hugh Renton who'll break some space yeah. coming in and then come in oh yes beautiful. Hugh Renton will do all the work little we offload we Aaron Smith Chuck it down there. Oh, love it when a Smith boy scores. It's, yeah. uh, no, it's going to be a winger. It's going to go wide, break wide, pass it into Hugh Renton, who'll draw the, the full Oh, back. we're doing there. Okay. He'll pass it into Aaron, running a beautiful support line. He'll score a try. So that's what's going to happen. Fantastic. Um, but I'll take any try, to be honest. And that game's going to be an absolute doozy. It, it, that, now, that's the real all-black trial. Forget the Crusaders <laughs> versus Chiefs. Highlanders versus Chiefs. The trial is, will any of the Highlanders make the All Blacks? Uh, yeah, Shannon Frizzell will make the All Blacks. Uh, Aaron Smith will make the All Blacks. Uh, Ethan <laughs> DeGroote will make the All Blacks. Ethan DeGroote is an absolute beast of a man. Uh, and then, well then, it's I do agree with everything Thomas Ulunga Jensen I may do, very well make the All I Blacks. I do agree with everything you just said. I think the Highlanders are great. Jonah Nariki, he's back. Um, he'll be doing well. But... Jeezy looked good to be back. I'm so happy to have him back. <laughs> I really was. Uh, I'm excited for that one. That's going to be the big game of the weekend for me. Um, uh, you're obviously excited. You're going to stay up and watch it, Sam? Stay of up? Of course I will. You go to bed before 7? I, I go to bed at 6.30 every night, but I'm going to stay up especially for this one. His kids are out still playing in the street. Yeah, they stay up till 9, but I'm a tired man. You are a tired man. It's... Um, it's quite appalling to see, to be honest. <laughs> he um, he also... <laughs> I'm like a cat. I need my sleep. Uh, then on Saturday, another Super Saturday. Lie down in your we bed. We are being blessed by the Super Rugby gods. I know. Pour yourself a bath. Get it nice and piping hot. Get the, Drag the TV into the bath. And then you can lie in the bath <laughs> from 2.05 p.m. Can I just say, please do not drag your TV into your bath. That will kill you. You will be dead. And you'll be unable to enjoy all the great rugby this weekend. It's so true. please leave it an appropriate distance away from your bath. Maybe... Use a cell phone, maybe sellotape it to the, very securely to the wall so that you don't need to touch it with your wet hands. Bathroom is what I meant to say. Don't take your TV in the bath. <laughs> They'd be, the, they're like, oh, why did the Champagne Rugby podcast get cancelled? <laughs> oh, because hundreds of people killed themselves. <laughs> we don't want any sort of murder suicides on our watch. Yeah. Um, but the first game of Super Saturday, Fiji and Drew are over there in Fiji playing the Canes. And I have to think the Canes will probably do what the Blues did there and the. They'll battle for the first sort of 20 minutes and then they'll coast out. But again, I'd love to see it. There have been teams go over there and trip up. 
Oh, come on, man. I was so, just... Why are you bringing this up again? Let's be funny. That was heartbreaking for me. Yeah, but for literally everybody else loved it. Oh. If you ask nine people out of ten who watch Super Rugby religiously, what was your highlight of the season? They're probably going to say the Crusaders. That wouldn't it? happen to me because I only hang out with people who support the Crusaders. It seems <laughs> like a... It's called an echo chamber, Sam. You've got to broaden your horizons. I love it. Speaking of the Crusaders, <laughs> they play the second game of Super Saturday. Against the Force, Force I'll, I'll yeah. be commentating that one here for the ACC on Sky Sport Channel Wonderful. 9. Tune in for that one. Uh, it'll be a doozy. I think the Force are going to get absolutely fucking pumped. <laughs> Me too. This is one of the ones where you, every time you have a, have a loss, it hurts. But you know, oh, the week after, I, I do not want to be that team. It's yeah. quite rare for Crusaders to lose two back-to-back and I'm hoping that we destroy the Western Force. Yeah, it's the first time you lost two back to back in like eight years or something. Um, hmm. 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 I should know this. Too long, he doesn't I even know. Like, I feel like we had one recently. Well, so, almost something we should have done research almost. on, but not today. But yeah, the Force, they lost to the Reds. They're not going to be bouncing back at all. The Crusaders at home. At home as well. At Orange Theory. Orange the worst. Theory Stadium. It's a wonderful stadium. Christchurch Stadium made by the people, for the people, after after our city was rocked by those horrible earthquakes. How dare you imply that that stadium is nothing more than the majestic castle it is. Well, it's a piece of shit. Oh, no, we dropped the, the castle-like iconography, and rightly so. Yeah, yeah rightly so. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think Still they a fortress. Will, I, reckon, I reckon they're going to put 60 on them. Yeah, nice. There you go. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna go. This is gonna be the first rugby game where a team passes a hundred points. Well, I think you've gone too far there. I reckon that's what's gonna happen. Go the Crusaders, my lovely boys. I love them. Saturday night at Eden Park, the Blues playing Moana Pacifica. It is the battle of the Auckland based. It's a teams. local derby kind of. It is. I've seen them been racking each other up on social media. Yeah, that's good. Moana Pacifica calling Dalton Papali'i. And I guess just trash talking him, standing there all looking staunch as he answers the phone. He didn't back down though. He didn't <laughs> back good. down. I think he said, and what? And what? Yeah, tough man. Yeah, he's a tough man. Great mustache. It's going to be a great game. And uh, yeah, oh my gosh, imagine, imagine Tony Lyle. Imagine if Moana Pacifica beat the Blues at Eden Park. You're just hoping that happens oh. because the Blues are above the Crusaders on the table. I'll tell you what, I'm not hoping that. I'm hoping that the Blues do well so that they're relaxed going into the Crusaders game, I think the week after, so that they get absolutely trounced by my lovely boys down in uh, down in Christchurch. Yeah, there, I think the week after. It is the week after. You're right, Lovely. and it is down in that atrocious stadium you got oh, down there in Christchurch. How dare you? It's offensive. And the last game is actually uh, a bit of a decent game to watch if if you do like Australian rugby. The Reds versus the Waratahs, New South Wales versus Queensland. It is the state of origin game that That's they have right. over there. I think that'll actually be a decent watch. Yeah. Uh, and I'm backing. Oh, maybe the Waratahs to win that. Oh, they're a f- the Waratahs awesome are the team. worst team. Go the Reds. I support New South Wales in the State of Origin League, so it's hard to not also go down those sort of lines for this game here. But you know what? I'm going to bail and go Queensland Reds. Do you know what I, who I support in the State of Origin? Who? Turning it off and watching a replay of a Crusaders game. Yeah. Go the great Crusaders. Freaking love them. Uh, the last game of the weekend, um, and this will be a game which will certainly happen – the Rebels versus the Brumbies uh, oh, yeah. in Melbourne. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah. That'll be good to watch the the Rebels get trounced by the Brumbies. And there's going to be a lot of birds flying over the stadium. Those freaking birds. Yeah. I, I had a nightmare about them the other night. Did you? Yeah. That sounds like a deep-seated psychological... I, uh, I don't know what it was because, like, I was... I was at a rugby game, and it wasn't in there, but it was probably the beautiful Orange Theory Stadium that I was imagining myself at, and even the birds have infiltrated my mind there. It was it was horrible. We need to hire some people with shotguns to take down those seagulls at Amy Park there in Melbourne. Yeah, well, that makes sense to me. Kill the birds. Um, it'll really horrify the children watching the rugby <laughs> as a mass of men with shotguns start sh- a- taking aim at the It's sky. for the viewers at home. Pow! Mid-game. Pow! They're getting in the way. Wow. It's making low vision people like Sam Smith think that a pigeon is the ball. And, <laughs> and he's so confused. Wow. Get him down. The old pigeon <laughs> is the ball trick. Well, that's lovely stuff. 
Um, anything you want to say before we sign off today, Sam? Um, I just want to say that no matter what happens, um, I'm proud of the Crusaders <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I love those guys. I can't get enough of them. Uh, but do get out there, watch all the rugby this weekend. It's fantastic. I'm the other thing I'm excited about coming up is the international, the New Zealand International Comedy Festival. Tony Lyle, you have a show in it, and I'm very excited about going to see it. Great segue there, Sam. It's true. If you've made it this far in the podcast, then why not make it a little further and come to my New Zealand Comedy Festival show? It's called Killjoy. Tickets at comedyfestival.co.nz. It's in Wellington next week. So if you're in Wellington, wow. come along. Auckland in a couple of weeks after that. Just go to TonyLyle.com for all the details. You got TonyLyle.com? Yeah, it wasn't. That's great. Tony Lyle, the sailor in uh, in England, hadn't grabbed it yet. Yeah, nice. I got SamSmith.co.nz. Did you? Yeah. You could probably sell that to Sam Smith, the singer, for a large sum. I don't know who you're talking about. You don't know Sam Smith, the singer? No. Okay, well, I feel like that's obviously not true. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. You guys Come are cool. I like you a lot. From that beautiful export beer garden studio. We'll see you next week. Go the Landers. Go the Crusaders. Bye.